The following podcast contains alcohol-enhanced conversations about alcohol, as well as the potential for the discussion about topics of dubious, disturbing, possibly offensive, but usually hilarious interest. The opinions stated herein are solely of the persons making them, and any endorsement of these opinions by any other party is not implied. Foul language is likely, but intolerant viewpoints are not. Listener intoxication is advised. Hello and welcome to episode 31 of the Whiskey Tangent Podcast. I'm Scott. And I'm Ed. And today we're doing something a little bit different than what we usually do, which is comparing two or more whiskeys with similar features from two or more different distillers. You know the deal. And instead, we're going to be conducting a panel tasting of five whiskeys from the same company, one that represents a seismic shift in the usual sturdy bedrock of the traditional whiskey industry. Because like it or not... All of the whiskeys that this company makes are not only sourced from other distilleries, but they're also blended into uniquely crafted, award-winning, limited releases that once gone are gone for good. Which is basically the opposite of the steadfast consistency that nearly everyone else in the whiskey world has been striving to achieve for the past 500 years. Oh yeah. And joining us... <laughs> that's the screaming of the ages. <laughs> And joining us for our foray into this ever-changing landscape of whiskey expressions is our good friend Jeff. Hey, how you guys doing? Who, in fact, was chiefly responsible for procuring all of the spirits that we have today. But first, Ed's going to introduce us to the company itself, as well as all of the hopefully delicious expressions that we'll be tasting and discussing tonight. Right. So the whiskey company that we are focusing on is Barrel Craft Spirits from Louisville, Kentucky. And we have five that we're going to be <laughs> tasting deliciously today. Yes. Four of them are from what we call their private barrel select program, right? Private release collection. Right. Yes. Uh, so the first one is AH10, which is a ruby port finished spirit, 120.52 proof. And then the next one will be AH08, a Malmsey Madeira finished spirit. Mm -hmm. That's 118.91. Uh, the third one is a Tokaji finish, which is a very sweet wine from Europe. 121 proof on this one. So none of these are for the weak at heart, I should assure you. <laughs> no. A local one that we fell in love with that our friends at Benash were involved with. Yeah. A Sicilian Amaro finish, 122.3 proof. <laughs> and lastly, we're going to try their very, very interesting dovetail expression, which is 123.8 proof. Mm. You know, it's a whiskey finish in rum port and Cabernet wine barrel. So I can't wait to hear all the stories behind all of these. And there's so much more about how old the whiskey is. Do we know anything about the mash bills? It's just so much going on here. So Scott, take so us much. into the next stage of when do I get to drink? Let me know when I drink. <laughs> I will let you know when to drink. But first, okay. we're going to ask uh, Jeff, because he was, as I said in the intro, responsible for getting all this whiskey for us. And uh, Jeff, just tell the story of how it happened. Well, yeah. we had this past spring, there was a Zoom barrel bourbon tasting that we all three of us attended. Yeah. Right. And it was hosted by Eva, I believe. Yeah. Eva. yeah. I think, yeah. Eva Mulcahy was on it and some other people from um, Barrel Craft Spirits. And following that, I had questions about the Sicilian Amaro expression. Mm -hmm. And I reached out to Eva and asked her questions. And she was extremely gracious. And we just had an open dialogue about the brand, the bottles, and how barrel bourbon is being marketed in the United States yeah. and, mm -hmm. and offered to send us some samples to taste on air. Yeah. And right. we have them here today. The Ruby Port, the Madeira, the Tokaji, and the Sicilian Amaro finish all were sent here by Eva. And then um, you actually purchased the dovetail. I did. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, during the, the Zoom meeting, many of the comments surrounded the dovetail and yeah. how long it was going to be available for. Right. We had never heard of it before. Yeah. No, so, me yeah. either. So I'm dying to They all have incredible color to them, but the dovetail looks amazing. I, I mean, holy crap, it looks just perfect. Well, I'll say something about, about the bottle itself. Sure. If you look at it, it's sleek. Mm -hmm. It shines when you clean it. 
Mm. It does. But, I mean, when you look at these on the shelves, it's really an impressive sight. They really do stand out. They do. Yeah. For so, and the, the color of the label is pretty That's cool. That's really what does it for me. The labels are weird colors. They're bright colors. And they definitely are not traditional. No. Like the Heaven Hill bottled and bond that we just tried on a short, mm-hmm. it has an old looking label. Like yeah. it's like very traditional. The Maker's Mark label is traditional. The Jack Daniels label. The colors are toned down. They, they're made to look very kind of original. The dovetails look modern. Definitely made to let you know we're something new. You've never had us before. And they're not given away either. No. So these are high proof cast strength expressions with elaborate and detailed finishes put on them and then blended together. And it's just really, really interesting for a new company to come on a scene. We've been talking about how more and more new whiskey companies are coming out using sourcing yeah. and making a huge mark. And I think as much as Whistlepig, you could say, is probably the biggest who does that, I think Barrel is quickly etching out they definitely their are. own reputation and spot in the whiskey market, especially the new whiskey market. Yeah. So uh, it, it's weird to call this a history of, of yeah. Barrel because right. they, they only started in 2012. But the funny thing about the history of behind Barrel Craft Spirits is that there is no history. Well, at least not like the ones that you're used to hearing from bourbon brands whose right. supposed roots go back to prohibition and beyond with some or all of their tales being a little hard to swallow. But that doesn't mean there isn't a story to tell. In 2012, founder Joe Beatrice, whiskey lover and home brewer, figured it was time for a change. After 20 years in the marketing and tech industries, he relocated to Kentucky with an idea to intentionally create unique whiskey expressions by sourcing and blending the best possible quality distilled and aged spirits. Taking cues from Scotland's long history of blending expressions from different distilleries whose barrels contain whiskeys of different ages and finishes, Joe, along with his master distiller Trip Stimson, sourced whiskeys in limited quantities from all over the United States and indeed the world. So, like 50 barrels from Tennessee, 20 barrels from Indiana, 10 barrels from like Poland, etc. With very particular mash bills and taste profiles. Reported, but not all confirmed, American sources include MGP, Four Roses, Barton, Bullet, Jim Beam, Heaven Hill, and Cascade Hollow, makers of George Dickel. Wow. These expressions are then painstakingly blended together in their Louisville, Kentucky location at an old data facility and bottled in a former server room where temperature and humidity can be controlled. And the results are impressive. In less than a decade, they've gone from distributing in just two states to being available countrywide while doubling sales year over year and garnering multiple wins at competitions, including just this year at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. In that same time, they've gone from producing whiskeys from single distilleries that couldn't even be called bourbons to an absolutely stunning lineup of releases. Legal bourbons and rise, single malts, single barrels, rums, and even something based on the Infinity Bottle concept called the Infinity Barrel Project. And despite whatever you may think about sourcing and blending, Barrel seems to have headed off any controversy about their practices by being uniquely transparent about what they do. Their locations, batch numbers, age statements, and mash bills are commonly stated on their labels. In fact, the only grousing about Barrel that I could even find was about their pricing, which can be charitably described as premium. But considering all the work that they put into finding the quality barrels, blending them together to get very specific taste profiles, the limited quantities of their expressions, and the awards that they've won, that criticism has been mostly muted. Mm. In fact, Barrel has pretty much destroyed for good the once ingrained notion that sourcing and blending are derogatory terms, and forcing the whiskey industry from producers to reviewers to drinkers who indeed are already moving in that direction to embrace a new wave of whiskey innovation in the service of exceptional quality. Wow, and I couldn't agree with you more, Scott. I think that was a tremendous intro to what Barrel does. Thank you. And we've seen companies that have started to break the image of sourced whiskey. Jefferson, for example, was a company that kind of started with their ocean and things like that. But the difference is they try to make their sources the same. Yeah. Then Blood Oath comes out with a different sourced masterpiece every year. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Sagamore, their plan is to get their own whiskey on the market one day. But right now they're sourcing and they've had some tremendous products come out. But then Barrel comes out. Every expression is different. Like they don't have any loyalty in the sense that they don't care to really redo number four again. No, they They just say, what are we doing tomorrow? And it's like Mm kind of weird because, you know, I feel like that with Little Book Chapter Three, who I think I'm going to mention every single episode this week. (laughs) The the reality is I love that so much. It may never come back again. And I guess I have to live with that and move on and find something else to drink. Right. And I guess Freddie Noe would tell me, hey, there's a Little Book Four coming out. Have faith. Drink that. You're going to like it. And I think that's what Barrel does. I was like, hey, listen, come along for the ride. What we did last summer was great, but now it's this summer. Drink this. It's absolutely true because yeah. they produced, and I counted on their website because the private release collection, <laughs> of which we have four, right. there were 
75 yeah. different yeah. expressions. It's like, crazy. I've who puts out 75 expressions? In, in how many years? <laughs> Eight in, years. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And the fact is, if you've ever seen where they have them all lined up with the different color labels, it's so eye appealing to look <laughs> yeah. at them. Like, it is. And they're just, you're like, they're beautiful. Yeah. So I yeah. think it's really interesting. Um, in fact, the first time I had a, a barrel, I think it was like number four or something. Got it for Christmas last yes, year. I remember. remember. We drank it on New, New, New Year's Eve. Eve and we drank it. Yeah. It's delicious. Yeah, it was spectacular. Yeah. And it was funny as I got a, the whistle pick tenure at the same time and I was drinking them side by side and they're <laughs> completely different. Right. But they're both sourced, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. So I can't wait to try these because we love finished whiskeys and not as much as Barrel. <laughs> Barrel <No>. loves finished <laughs> whiskeys. Holy crap. Like they love to find whiskey that's old and unique and like the Tokachi finish. I, I mean, I thought it was Japanese. Yeah. I found that no, it's actually a sweet wine from Hungary. Yeah. So they're out there doing their homework. Yeah. Speaking of Hungary, I'm thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to tasting. Yeah. So we're going to do this like a panel tasting. Um, right. We're going to taste three. We're going to take a break. We'll yeah. come back. Ed will do a little bit more um, history about the founder himself. Right. And Joe Beatrice. And then we'll taste the other two. And at the end, we'll um, rate them and yeah. we'll add them up and see which All one five. wins. Yeah. All right. So the, the first one is the Ruby Port. Well, real quick. I mean, yeah. we've done a port finish episode. We have. We talked about how Basil Hayden Dark Rise got some port in it. So this is something that we are familiar with. So it's why I'm really excited to try this one. Yeah. So apparently Ruby Port is the freshest and the least complex of the fortified ports. It's deep red in color and filled with sweet flavors of red fruits. What was the proof again on this one? Ed? Uh yeah, this is 120.52. Okay. Uh th- there's of course no age statements on these and they're a blend of Kentucky whiskeys. That's all that we know about these. Uh the largest component of which is an 18-year-old. Right, right. I was going to say like there's no age statement but some of these are some old ass whiskeys, trust yes. me. So I couldn't find any reviews of this online, so we're kind of on our own here. All right. Well, there's three of us, we should be able to come up with something. <laughs> something. <laughs> Check the news. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, you can definitely smell the heat. Mm, getting a sweetness somehow. but Well, nothing. not somehow. You were smelling it. That's how you were getting it. <laughs> Shade. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the nose means. You're smelling it. That's how you get this. I know, what the, I know what the nose means. If he was gay, he'd be like, you little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, plums and berries are what you're supposed to be smelling no, no, of this. Yeah, right? I, I got that. It's sweet and fire. Exactly. Yeah. Like, not to make fun of Jeff, but there really isn't anything in particular that I'm smelling. Right. Except there is definitely a distinctive, maybe even a port flavor. Sweet, if I have to, yeah, fruity like, note. Yeah, I mean, yes. Let's try it. Yeah. Hmm. Ooh, good. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. my, we're going to be drunk in about five minutes. Where's my, no, I, need, <laughs> I, I, I need a yeah. little bit of water to chase. Yeah, yeah. Holy mother. You have some water, Jeff? Yeah. Jeff, I, I Jeff doesn't some. need it. He's like a, he's like a hell's angel. I have over here. Whiskey. He, he has water, but he doesn't want it. I've got my, um, what, what the hell was this? Oh, the uh, bottle and bond. <laughs> he's washing it down with the hundred proof <laughs> bottle and bond. <laughs> <laughs> he washes his chaser. He washes down at 120 proof whiskey with 100 proof whiskey. Oh, I gotta love it. Oh my god, he's like such a tough guy right now. I should be getting like a tattoo right now <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> Seriously, um, you should. Yeah, it's it's not spicy. It's sweet heat. It's what we smelled on the nose. Yeah, particular it's, flavors. It's got a great flavor. It's got a great flavor, but what is it? I'm it's, getting a the, a char. Maybe it's the char from the barrel. Yeah, toasty. Mm. I'm getting cherries. In my okay. Opinion strong actually mm. now right in the back of my throat cherries and a little bit of vanilla like a sweet candy cherry yeah. right yeah like a Maris. manhattan like a manhattan yeah yeah like a, a uh, one of those uh luxardo manhattan Ooh. cherries yeah Ooh. Um, so much fire though just burning i know so strong i i am trying to put a little bit of water on this just to tamp down the fire so i can taste some actual profiles yeah, the water. It really does, right? It, the flavor just jumping out. Yeah, oh my right. God. Wow, it's incredible. Yeah. Wow, we, I feel oh. like we've grown so much from the short, Jeff. We, we have. <laughs> Jeff refused to water down the Heaven yeah. Hill seven year bottle of bond. Well, he literally said I ruined it when I put an ice cube in it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like just right. a little bit of water, especially in this because it's such a high proof, it does tamp down the alcohol and it yeah. brings out a lot mm-hmm. of the sweetness to it. Well, it's your fault because a year ago <laughs> I was not a bourbon drinker. Oh, and you started your podcast, and I am now, oh, and wow. now I'm watering down my 120 proof right and hiding bourbon with 100 proof right, <laughs> right. Heaven Hill, and, and, and hiding all his whiskey bottles from his wife. <laughs> That's right. 
my little is a closet of shame yeah and loveliness i'll be down in the basement writing my bourbon manifesto, <laughs> manifesto. Seriously, i growing I, I, growing my, my beard <laughs> and my fingernails you're the yeah. che guevara of bourbon. i have my own closet i have my own closet where i hide like stuff that i just porn I right it's like whiskey's like become <laughs> the porn of my teenage years is now the whiskey of my growing years like <laughs> oh, oh my it. gosh so did we really t- detect any particular flavors on this besides like the maraschino cherry and stuff? I feel like we kind of failed. No, <laughs> but job I, th- of I, think, I think we, the finish comes out really strong. I, so I tasted the port finish most of all. That was the number one flavor I took away from here. It's good. I like it a lot, but it's not very distinctive. Right. So let's see how it compares to the Madeira finish. Yeah, the Madeira finish. All right. 118 proof. So this is practically like iced tea for barrel. <laughs> It's under 120. Right. It's the only one under 120 on the day. So uh, this is Malmsey Madeira. So Malmsey, it's a white grape variety that's used to create one of four recognized styles of Madeira, which is made on the Portuguese islands of Madeira off the coast of Africa. Malmsey can have vanilla notes along with molasses, walnuts, and caramel. And this one I could find tasting notes. So maybe they'll help us out. All right. Hold on. I have to tell you right now, I'm completely will. different on the nose. It's lighter. You're right. And it, flavors are coming through. But still that fucking heat. Oh, it's 118. What are you going to do? Yeah. So, are you getting anything? I'm actually getting like honey. I definitely get more traditional bourbon notes off of this. Vanilla. A little caramel. Yeah. Definitely some wood oak tones. Yeah. It's something I can't put my finger on, which I'm assuming is a Madeira finish. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, I like this. Sweet. And the other one's good, but this one is delicious. And that the fire is still there. I got to put a little bit of water to here. Yeah. The the, the fire's just getting in the way for me for these. Yeah. Just a little water to take it down to about 105 so I can get through that heat. Oh, yeah. Almost like a cider. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say apple. Yeah. What, what do the uh, experts say? I, I'm tasting <laughs> oh. the same thing, kind of like an apple. Okay. A yes. little pepper on this. Like, it's a little spicy finish, very sweet in the beginning, and a little bit of a pepper finish. Interesting. Okay, so on the nose, they say sweet hints of vanilla, caramel, pear, and apple. There you go. On the palate, like a roller coaster, it goes from sweet to hot to a harsh whiskey bomb, so sweet with citrus and apple. And the yeah. finish, they say, is syrupy. Well, I have to tell you that. I mean, they're all syrupy because they're 120. I know, but that's one of the most accurate yeah, we um, reviews that I've actually followed right through with my own experience that I've ever had. Like, that's right on to what I've experienced. Yeah. Like. Well, we got the caramel and the apples and the vanilla. We and did. The, and the honey. Yeah. Yeah, we did a good job with that one. That good. one was Good delicious. job, guys. <laughs> That one was delicious. <laughs> yeah, this one's really good. I, you're right, Ed. I do like this one before because the first one kind of just tasted like a conglomeration of fruit. Yeah, you know, we're only having a sample to share. It's true. Maybe if I had two ounces on a globe of the first one, it would be able to take a little bit of a journey and open up more. I didn't have a chance to really put it through the paces, so to speak. Mm. But I didn't have to in the Madeira. The Madeira was good straight and was way better with a little bit of water in it. Yeah. All right. Good. So the third one is the Tokaji, which I'm so excited about because I've never had anything from Hungary. Yeah. Tokaji is primarily a lusciously sweet wine from the Tokaj region of northeastern Hungary, seated in the shadows of the Carpathian Mountains. Uh, Let me just stop you both. I'm going to sound like a dick here. Go ahead. But the pronunciation is what looks like Tokaji is Tokei. Oh. Is the the way it's pronounced, I assume, in in Eastern Hungary. Well, our apologies to the Hungarian peoples. So, depending on the type of tokehi, uh, flavors of honey, caramel, pineapple, butterscotch, apricot, sweet pastries, and orange marmalade are possible. Oh, my God. Okay. We're smelling. Let's let's check it on the nose. Wow. Hmm. Different than... I I get the fire from the first one, but I get some sweet from the second one. Yes. Ooh. Raisins. Yeah. I, I can see that. I, I was ne- going to say grapes, but no. I'd never smoked raisins before. <laughs> wow. In a whiskey. <laughs> I've still, I've I was going to say, well, raisins. never had raisin when you were a kid, you deprived little, little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Not really a big fan of raisins, but raisin brand was one thing I did like. Hmm. This one's 121.42. That's another thing I like about Trip. He just throws it together, whatever the proof is. He doesn't try to round nope. it up. Nope. Cast strength. You want to add a little bit of water, take it down to 121 even? Nope. Yep. Leave it just how it comes out of the barrel, whatever it is. Yeah. Mm. All right, let's try it. Yeah. I'm excited about this one. Mm. Mm. Different, spicy. Wow. More sweet and more spicy than the second one. Yeah. Mm. I got to I gotta put a little water on this right away. Yeah, this is a little deeper than the second one. Flavor is a little more complex than this one. This has like uh, baking spices. Mm-hmm. A clove. Was, uh, yeah, I was getting like a... Definitely a clove. Like a... Not, I won't say a cake, but... Like mm. when you say baking spices, yeah, I yes. think that's what I was I was tasting. Yeah, when the guy's like shortbread cookie and things like that, you know? 
I mean, I think I like this better than the second one. Like uh, e- each one's gotten better. I'm close. Like I, I might need a little more water in this because. Oh, I didn't put any water in it. <laughs> wow. I need more water. This is wow. so fire and complex. It's so wow. good. It's so good. I'm having trouble describing what it is I'm tasting. Yeah. Yeah. That's how complex the flavor is. I'm getting a menagerie of different things. It's so complex. And I can't say, oh, that's cinnamon. And oh, I yeah. feel like there's some honey with like a, like a graham cracker. It, it's not that separate for me. It's just this. Yeah. As soon as you put your finger on it, the new taste yeah, is in it and replaces it. And you've I, forgotten what you've so tasted. True. So I, I was able to find tasting notes for this one as well. Mm. Uh, on the nose, spiced apple butter, golden raisins. Yes. Soaked in syrup and barrel char. <laughs> also wow. known as sultanas. That's right. <laughs> Sultana raisins. Mm. Uh, random facts. <laughs> On the palate, apple butter, clove, cinnamon, orange zest, maraschino cherry, cedar wood, mild oak, and something akin to barbecue sauce. We Boots named with everything bur- except barbecue yeah, sauce. Yeah, I, I I'm not sure of the barbecue sauce. I didn't sauce get that. I mean, we said it was spicy, so maybe that's what they're talking about. Maybe, yeah. So on the finish, uh, Pinot Noir wine, orchard fruits, then oak tannins, rich tobacco, and cinnamon. So like this guy and us, we named at least 15 or 16 different tastes yeah, and smells that, and everything. It's so complex and, and layered. And, and that's why we're having trouble trying to describe what's going on here. Right. I mean, we're not professionals. We try our best. Yeah. And if you buy any of these expressions based on our right. recommendations, you will also have problems tasting right but you won't be disappointed with the attempt no absolutely not so we're gonna take a little break right now yeah and uh wash our glasses and come back and try the last two the sicilian amaro finish Mm. which is 122.3 proof oh god and the delicious dovetail which scares me a bit because we have a complete bottle of the dovetail (laughs) that's 123.8 which is the highest expression that we have awesome so um yeah we'll be back in about 30 seconds Okay, so we're back uh, after a prolonged absence, not for you, but for us, wherein we discovered two new musical talents, and, and I will cut all of this. Because none of this is related to what we're doing. None of this is related to what we're doing. Please stop talking about it. So we're back, and <laughs> <laughs> so we're back, and Ed's here to tell you, before we taste the other two expressions that we have, uh, about the founder, Joe Beatrice. So Joe Beatrice is the founder of Barrelcraft Spirits, which he founded back in 2012. He's like a former marketing and technology entrepreneur. His first company was um, Blue Dingo Digital in the 1990s, which was a company that helped companies use the internet to establish, brand, and grow their products. This was, of course, at the time when the internet was just, you know, Al Gore just founded it. <laughs> <laughs> so he wanted to do something different, and he decided that he wanted to get into the spirit industry after, you know, 20 years of doing doing what he did before he was a long time home brewer <laughs> so was scott he didn't start his own distillery damn it i wish he had yeah me too started my own podcast yeah. though that's true that's yeah. true well, that's something it says 2012 but really it was 2013 when he was up and running in louisville okay. uh which is pretty much the epicenter of american whiskey so mm. not a bad place to be if you're going to do it no i mean he realized what a lot of people realize is that he didn't have a field of corn and wheat and mm-hmm. rye so what's he going to do who does um Jeff, do you have a field of corn and wheat? You don't, right? You have a lot of cats. Fuck off. Random belligerence. Jeff has too many cats. Edition. <laughs> <laughs> so he um he basically. <laughs> You know, Joe questioned the conventional wisdom at the time and took a different course, which he had done in every aspect of his career. Instead of building his own distillery, he sourced and blended exceptional cast whiskey from established producers, bottled them at cast strength, and sold them as transparently as possible and as premium price as possible. Yeah. It is unique in America, but it's not unique in Scotland as independent bottlers have been doing that for a long time. And they definitely inspired Joe and the path he took with Battlecraft Spirits. So... He makes sure that he's intimately involved in every step in the process. 
He also relies heavily on his master blender, Trip Stimson, to choose and create great spirits. Trip Stimson is what they call the director of uh, distillery operations and the chief whiskey scientist. I mm-hmm. like that. <laughs> yeah, I like that too. He graduated with a degree in biochemistry and uh, molecular biology. Jesus, uh, smart guy. And he has worked for Jack Daniels and Woodford Reserve and Old Forester. He also oversaw Jefferson's Reserve Project, which was the first episode that Jeff here joined us on. Oh, right. It was our July 4th episode last year where we did the very rare Jefferson Reserve, and we all loved it. And so here, evidently, Tripp had something to do with that company's sourcing. So he joined Barrel Crafts Spirits in 2017, and together with Joe, they are really taking the whiskey world by storm, I would think it's fair to say. And we're about to try two more of their delicious samples, if you will. Yeah, I mean, what they've done has completely turned on its head Mm -hmm. what the normal course of making a bourbon is all about. Right, which is why I'm not at all surprised that trip was from jefferson yeah but like i said jefferson tries to reproduce their mixes so they're pretty similar like if you get a bottle of very rare it'll be a little bit different but it's still supposed to be the same formula well barrel is kind of going off the rails and every expression is going to be different and yet they're winning awards their batch 21 bourbon won double gold and best small batch and best overall bourbon in the 2020 san francisco world spirits competition that was held just this summer mm. their uh, batch 20 won double gold their batch Batch Rye, number three, won double gold, and their Batch Bourbon 22 won gold. Wow. That's incredible for a company that doesn't make their own whiskey. Right. And it's got to piss a lot of people off. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, I couldn't really find any kind of reviewer or whiskey expert saying, oh, these guys are, where where the fuck are they coming from? Like, everyone kind of respects them. I think that's uh, to Joe's credit. Like, his personal relationships within the industry and where he sources it from and his uh, previous marketing experience. And Trip, too, I think. I think. Oh, Oh, yeah. Disrespected. And I, I, actually, I agree. I, I have to break it down. That's all bullshit, though, Scott. It doesn't what? matter. Well, Joe's a relationship. It's what's in the glass, right? Well, the reason they're getting respect is yeah. what's in the glass, uh, right? But right, buddy. I mean, that's that's true. I I think it's a combination of all of that because you're right, though. If you no, it's just what's in the glass. Random belligerence. It won't let Scott agree. Edition. <laughs> well despite uh, right, well, I'll, uh, look I'm, I'm trying to agree with you <laughs> if you'll let me the like you can have all the personal relationships you want right. but you're right if what you're making tastes like ass right. no one's going to respect right. you if everything tastes like uh, James E. Pepper <laughs> 1776 right. yeah. everything tastes like the James E. Pepper speaking of ass right. James E. <laughs> oh, Pepper my God. Oh, I cannot shit. wait until they have their own stuff so I can give them another chance all right. So, all right so let's taste the AH05 yeah. Sicilian Amaro. 18 years old, Kentucky bourbon, finished in Sicilian Amaro cast. Oh, it smells amazing. Amaro it smells great. is Italian mm. for bitter. Uh, it's a liqueur that is commonly consumed as an after dinner digestif. Right. Pantif. I am very Amaro with my love life. <laughs> it uh, usually has a bittersweet flavor, sometimes syrupy, with an alcohol content between 16 and 40 percent. So you'll get bitter, citrus, sweet, and herbal notes. So right. this is like right without uh, with, it's without the orange sadness of Campari. Though. Right? <laughs> no, it's like Campari with the orange uh, armpit. <laughs> All right. So I couldn't find any reviews about this one either. So right. we're, we're on our own again. We we're tried on. this during the tasting with Eva. We did, and Trip was on that as well. We loved this a lot. We loved it so much that Ed went out and bought a bottle. Jeff also went out and bought a bottle. Bottle. And it was not cheap. It was all of $99 at Benash, and it was mm. all of it worth it. Because I don't spend $100 on a bottle of whiskey easily. True. But when there's something that is this unique and layers of flavor, which is what you get from this. And, and what is the proof on this again? One, I don't have it in front of me. It's 20, 122. It's 122.3. You got yeah. it. I mean, all I can say about on the nose is candy notes. It's sweet, burnt sugar. Almost like a cotton candy smell. Right. Just sugar, right? You're yeah. Like a, but a hot sugar. like a Yeah. A, like, a, like, like, like you're on the boardwalk and they're right. making yes. cotton candy yes. right in front of you. Right. I love yeah. that. Mm-hmm. I, I remembered myself mm. uh, standing on the Ocean City Boardwalk. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, Jeff knows that well. Uh, Ed was a Wildwood guy, but Jeff yeah. and I were Ocean City guys. So Yeah, they had more money than me growing up. But anyway, so the... Um, <laughs> 
I guess a Jersey parents, joke. I guess our parents did. Yeah, right. it's a Jersey it's a joke. Jersey joke. If you know Jersey, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so, oh, did you taste it? Yeah, I did take a sip of it yeah. right now. Um, you get the the citrus is very flavor forward. Oh, it, it really is. We had this at the Zoom tasting. Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. The next day, I jumped in my car, drove straight to Benash, <laughs> and bought myself a bottle. Yeah, and, and I actually, did three I days bought, later. Yeah, I it's... bought two because I used one for a birthday gift. Oh, that's right. Right. <laughs> I drank some of that also. And, <laughs> <laughs> and stepbrother Joe. Was that Joe's you gave it to him? I think I gave it to Sergio. Sergio. He gave oh, the stuff tail. Oh, my God. I'm jumping the gun. Right. right. Jeff gives good presents. Yeah. <laughs> so, thanks does. to Barrelcraft Spirits, I'm getting major points with my friends. Mm. No, seriously. I mean, uh, God, this whiskey. So the tasting notes are, to me, burnt sugar, creme brulee, caramel, just candy notes. Orange. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. A zest. It's in the nose. It's in the palate. I mean, because this was made from Amaro, like it almost tastes like a high proof Boulevardier. Mm-hmm. Bitterness is decreased. You can taste the sweetness and the citrusy oh God, yeah. and, the, and, and the rest of the, and the I whiskey. I see what you're getting, but I get the same bitterness I get from a Manhattan, not from the uh, Campari in, it, a, in a Boulevardier. Like I would if I put bitters into a drink. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I just put it on some ice. I want to see what that does mm. to it. But God, this is so fucking good. Like, yeah, I'm, gonna, I am, I'm putting some water in it. Yeah, put that on the label. So fucking good. They should. They, <laughs> they should. should. Joe, do that. The AH05 <laughs> Sicilian Amaro. This is so fucking good. I whiskey. feel like if he could, if, if that could be on the label, Trip would be like, yeah, let's go with that. Trip was on the Zoom call too, and he seems just like a like cool guy to hang yeah, out with. Yeah. Definitely. Oh my gosh, with some water on it, this is terrific. Yeah. Plenty. And and it's like like orange marmalade almost now. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So the the um, fifth and final expression, dovetail. Scott, tell us about the dovetail and why you think that it's their homage to the whiskey industry and consistency. Right. So because everything that they do is a one-off expression, and once it's gone, it's gone. The way that they described the dovetail on their website, yes, I'm over 21. <laughs> <laughs> they describe it as dovetail took almost a year to get right from blending to labeling all coming together in a seemingly perfect point we have produced limited releases of dovetail using the same ingredients and process with each bottling there are proof variations so to me it seems like they're going for the, the same taste profile every time whether or not the proofing is the same completely different than how they describe their other stuff mm. they also say dovetail is blended to highlight some of their favorite flavors woody bourbon terroir driven dun cabernet toasted french oak late bottled vintage port pipes black strap molasses casks all working in tandem to create a buttery and deep whiskey as unique as it is delicious it mm. has won the chairman's trophy at the 2020 ultimate spirits challenge they scored a 97 out of 100. Oh, my God. Double gold at the 2020 New York International Spirits Competition, where they scored a 96 out of 100. Gold at the 2019 San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Gold at the 2019 Whiskies of the World. And Whiskey Advocate gave them a rating of 90. Haters. I got you. <laughs> the proof is 123.8. Wow. Uh, there's no age statement, but it is purportedly a blend of 10 year old whiskey distilled in Indiana, finished in Dunn vineyards in Napa Valley, California, mm. Cabernet barrels, 11 year old bourbon distilled in Tennessee, finished in Blackstrap rum casks and late bottled vintage port pipes. Right. And then filtered through the pantyhose of Marilyn Monroe. That's what I hear. <laughs> 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 we can only hope. <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. President. (laughs) Okay, so. Dovetail, here we go. Now, do you want to hear what the tasting notes are? We're going to try to do it on our own. Let's do it on our own. All right. We can always back it up because I know there's there's notes on this. We can. Let's go nose first. I'm telling you right now, it's already complex Mm. on my nose. Yeah, I got the website tasting notes and I got whiskey jug tasting notes. Hmm. So I'm getting that smell that's like a leather couch almost. Like. Yep, that I'm getting the same wow. thing. But yet, not, trust me, that might, that might not sound good at home, but I'm telling you, it's very good. So this has got like a citrus, almost like a grapefruit going on to, to mm. me. It's, it's, like, it's something familiar. But not orange. It's like I wanna, When I say citrus, I don't. Wanna, it's like different than orange or lemon. Oh, and like, um, like a weird bitter. Yeah. I'm also getting a little brown sugar. Like a, I'm going to try a little bit of it because I need to try Ooh. Well, one of the problems with the nose of this, because it is so fiery, right. you kind of want to put water on it first in mm. order to be able to smell it, but you don't want to put the water on before nah, you taste it. Nah, I'll do that later, but yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Even they recommend it on their website. They say that uh, with a few drops of water, it opens up an avalanche of orange and tropical notes and then like vanilla. Let's try it. 
Jesus, it's so complex. Holy crap. Wow. Nine so, flavors are attacking my tongue right now. So I'm telling you right now, the Amaro finish is one of the best whiskeys I've drank in a long time. Okay. And I do think this just slips past it as yeah. being a little bit better. Yeah. What's the dovetail go for? About 100 also? 89, 90, 100? Jeff, you got it? It was about 75, 80. Oh. Look, bargain. Nice. It's a bargain. <laughs> it's a discounted barrel. So what, do you have a coupon? Like you type in fall 20 and then- <laughs> <laughs> You type in Whiskey Tangent Podcast and you get 20% off? Right. Actually, they slap you and charge you $5 more. <laughs> uh, when you swallow, I'm getting a cherry taste on the back of my tongue, which is fantastic. Yeah. Right, I'm getting definitely <laughs> molasses. Once yeah. I, put, I put one cube on it. Oh, I didn't put water on it. Damn it. Mm. There's molasses all over it now. Baking uh, spices are still there. There's like a nutmeg going on, or um, definitely baking spices. This is so a, complex. Like this, I'm, gosh, this is an extraordinary whiskey. This is amazing. Like I'm not gonna lie, I kind of wanted to hate on Barrel when it came out because yeah. it looked like you know you just it looked like a gimmick, right? And even the one that I got for Christmas, but it wasn't like as nearly as spectacular as the last two whiskeys I just drank, which I consider two of the best whiskeys I ever drank. And I'm literally not kissing Barrel's ass. I'd be happy to tell Barrel if it was pedestrian and i'll be honest their port finished one yeah. it, it just to me wasn't what i would want to drink yeah 18 year old the amaro finish and this one you said is 10 but I, do we know that i feel like this is there's so much going on it, here it says it's a blend of a 10 year old and 11 year old are they rice it's not a bourbon or rye it's well, just a whiskey the, it says 10 year old whiskey oh wow. from indiana finished in the cabernet and then the 11 year old tennessee one finished in blackstrap right. rum and wow vintage port that's why i'm tasting the molasses when i so, retire yeah. i want to go and live at mgp do they have beds there is there a cot <laughs> they have like a little shed I can live in. Is there like, a play, it's like the Mecca. I'm going to go there and just on a pilgrimage. Holy crap. They right, get so, this shit from Indiana. All right. So what I want to say about this is this reminds me of the rum mm-hmm. that Anders brought us that he made right. the original mint julep cocktail out of. Mm-hmm. And later we had the rum by itself. It has that quality to it. No, I taste what you're saying. Yeah. It, it was the same finish that I had on that rum. And I, and I think that's what you get when you finish it in those barrels. Right. So I am absolutely blown away by the last two whiskeys. So if you can find the dovetail and you can, it's a treat for yourself. Now, if it, listen, if you're like, I don't spend $70 on a whiskey, I got it. You don't have to. Go get Elijah Craig. Go get Woodford. Have Knob Creek. Go have a good day. But if you're out there looking for something special, the dovetail's exceptional. I don't know where you can find you know, another Amaro finish, but they have so much out there that you're not going to be disappointed. If you find one that's just okay, like the port wine finish was for me today, then the next one's going to be like the Madeira. We're like, wow, this is actually pretty good. And then the next one's going to be like the Dovetail. We're like, wow, this is unbelievable. And that's what I think Barrel gives you. Yeah, I love the concept of this company. I love yep. what they're doing. But it's almost like live by the sword, die by the sword. So if you've made all of these expressions, yeah. not everybody is going to like- 75 of them. Every one of those expressions that you made. Right. And you know they're going to, like you just said, if you don't like one of these, maybe you'll like this one. But at the price point that they're selling them at, right? maybe people aren't really going to want to take a chance well, that's on something true. if they've had a bad experience. It's fair. Yeah. It's fair. And But I will say this. It's not like, on the other hand, it's not like if you take the, you know, you drink the Jefferson Ocean, you're like, oh, you know what? It's not that good. And then you never go back. Here, you try number seven. Eh, it wasn't that great. Right. Number nine, it's like, wow, it's the yeah. best thing I ever drank. Right. And 11 is on a celestial plane <laughs> in another dimension. You know what I mean? I just, um, if you want to look this up. Yeah, go ahead. So I was doing my research yeah. for tonight, mm-hmm. and I was on their website, wow. and I was looking at all the different expressions from Joe's playlist, and I saw there's one, number five is Butter Cake Barrel. Ooh. And is that the bourbon batch number five? Batch number five. Okay. And I reached into my back pocket, pulled my <laughs> wallet out, and my fingers were just moving by themselves. Next thing I know, I'm ordering it, and I cannot wait for it to come now. Neither oh, so can you, we. Okay. So let me see. Okay. So it's a straight bourbon whiskey. Just Still and aged in Tennessee. One twenty four point seven proof cask. Wow. Aged eight years and three months in charred white oak barrels. Its mash bill is seventy percent corn, twenty six percent rye, and four percent malted barley. It has won double gold at the San Francisco World Spirits Competition in 2016. It was a finalist, 91 points, in the Ultimate Spirits Challenge in 2016. Whiskey Advocate rating of an 88, and it got three stars from the Ultimate Spirits Challenge cocktail recommendation. Its flavor notes, I'll just do the palate, savory notes of ripe summer peaches yield to treacle Mm. across the back of the teeth. Each measured sip reveals sultry flavors of freshly pulled pralines, cherries, and breakfast meats. Mm. Mm, I can't wait for that. 
The knights are saying, meat! The 124.7 proof tingle across the tongue and roof of the mouth is assertive mm. and memorable, yet not overpowering. The few cool drops of spring water soften and extend the luxurious bounty that is both unctuous and pertinent. Wow. So that's one that's coming <laughs> in the mail to Jeff. Yeah, oh my God, and Jeff, we'll, you are going to come over we'll, and bring it. Yeah, we'll drink that. Maybe on air, maybe off air, but we'll let you know how it goes. So <laughs> once again, to finish this up, yeah. I mean, we didn't have a hell of a lot of tangents today, but the whiskey oh, wait, itself. Wait, wait. We had to rate them. Oh my God, we never even rated them. No, we got to oh, rate them. Okay, right, well, so right. here, here we go. Ed, Ruby Port. Seven. Jeff. I give that a six. Six. I am also going to give it a six. The Madeira. Ed. Eight. Jeff. Five. Five. Wow, you like that oh, less than the first one. Interesting. Interesting. I liked it better. So seven for that one for me. The Tokai. Ed. Eight. Uh, Jeff. Five. Also a five. Interesting. I like that a lot better. I'm going to give that also an eight. The Sassoon Amaro. Ed. Nine. Jeff. Eight. I am giving that also a nine. The Dovetail. Ed. Ten. Ten. Jeff. Eight. Ooh, Jeff's a hard scorer. He is. I'm glad he's not my teacher. I'm giving that one a nine as well. Okay. No, I'm going to give it a ten. Fuck well, it. <laughs> I, after, after the dovetail and the Amaro, I'm going to go home to my whiskey closet, Yeah. take my Woodford Reserve, and open the front door and throw it into the street. That's not true. <laughs> the Woodford... That's False. Not Woodford it's lies. Woodford is a perfect expression of bourbon with corn, vanilla, and oak, and is, is beautiful in its own right. But you know what What, what he's saying, though? But is, I wish there was a cast strength so I could see what it would be like at 120, because we're dealing with it down at like 92, and this is 122. So how are we supposed to even compare the two together? Right. So that's what I was about to say. So we're really comparing apples and oranges here. Like, these right. are different things. This is so many different barrels mixed together with so many different taste profiles, and it's just not the same. Again, though, if you like Woodford, you're going to get Woodford forever. You're going to be able to find it on the liquor store shelves. That expression, it's going to taste the same now as it will five years from it's now. so consistent. As it will 10 years from now, as it will 20 years from now. Barrel bourbon, you're not going to get this exact same expression again. And wanting to never drink anything else again besides barrel whiskey is very attractive right now because all these expressions were amazing. So in our contest, yeah, it was in exact reverse order that I, we tasted. I'm sure them. it was, yeah. yeah. The dovetail came in first, Sasu and Amaro second, the Tokai finish third, the Malmsey Madeira finish fourth, and the Ruby Port fifth. We accidentally drank them in order. We didn't mean to. Like, we just randomly picked this order. They easily could have been in any order. It just turned out to be in the order that we liked them. Yeah. Reverse order. It, it, you're right. It, it really was. But listen, this was a great episode. We want to thank Eva for helping this happen. We want to thank Jeff for talking to Eva. Yes. And for being here today to make this happen. Thanks so much, We hope Jeff. to do some more. The great thing about Barrel is every year there's new expressions to, to talk about. We and could do a Barrel episode every year. Seriously. <laughs> and that might not be a bad idea. We'd love to have Eva on one day. Yeah. Or even Trip or Joe. I'm happy happy for anybody sure to come on or if nick the uh, single barrel manager wants to come on because they're just great people and it's a wonderful company so for the whiskey tangent podcast i'm ed i'm scott and i'm jeff and so cheers everybody drink responsibly and have a wonderful wonderful week later If you enjoyed this podcast episode, be sure to check out our next episode, which is way better than this one. Oh, yeah. Also, follow and like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash whiskey tangent and follow us on Twitter at whiskey tangent. You can follow me personally at that whiskey guy and follow Scott at giant cup of awesome spelled A-W-S-U-M just to be annoying. Hey. You can email us any questions, comments, or love at whiskeytangent at gmail.com. And of course, you can find us always at our podcast website, whiskeytangent.podbean.com.